Hey guys, it's Tricky Nick here. You all know Mario Kart, drive around the track thrice and hope your placement's nice. It's a game that almost every Nintendo fan has played. 33 million copies? This is a port! Unfortunately, with great popularity comes not so great ripoffs. When other companies saw the incredible success Nintendo was having with Mario Kart, they decided they wanted to reap the rewards too. This gave rise to the Mario Kart ripoffs. Games that take the basic Mario Kart formula and slap some popular characters on the box. Today, I'm going to look at three Mario Kart ripoffs because I'm so bored of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and see if they can hold up against the titan that is Mario Kart. You all know Nick, right? Well, here is Nickelodeon Kart Racers. This game is supposed to be a combination of all of Nickelodeon's most beloved cartoon characters and their environments in a racing mashup for the ages. Graphically, this game is not too impressive. The minimalist style here comes off as lazy rather than charming like in Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom. I can't quite explain why, you just have to play the game for yourself. So let's look at all the Nickelodeon cartoon franchises that are featured in this game. And now, let's look at all the cartoon franchises excluded from the game. So yeah, not the strongest roster. Especially when 4 out of the 12 characters are just the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? More like... Dumb, stupid roster filler. Anyways, let's take a look at some of the courses. Playing through the courses, they're a bit generic and don't really make a whole lot of sense. There's also a lot of courses that are basically just the same exact theme but with a different layout. Take for example the Pineapple Cup. There is only one Spongebob course in this entire Grand Prix. Let me ask you this, if you were a game designer, wouldn't you put all the Spongebob themed courses in the Spongebob themed cup? The scattered style of all the course layouts just seems really unorganized to me. Maybe it's just me that's complaining about this, but it really gets under my skin. The tracks themselves are also pretty generic, lacking the color and life that makes Mario Kart so fun. Look at the sidelines of this Mario Kart track. And then look at the sidelines of this Nickelodeon Kart Racers track. One looks like a lively city and the other one looks like if a lively city went through nuclear war. Also, the courses feel really long and drawn out. That might be because cars are slow or the gameplay isn't very fun. They just seem like they go on for so long. The music accompanying these tracks isn't necessarily bad, but I really can't remember a single one. Anyways, how's the gameplay here? The controls? They're not good. Not not good! Everything is so clunky and you can't drift without bumping into everything! Also, why is the B to go and the A to reverse? That's backwards! Compared to the controls in Mario Kart, this is pretty unplayable. The items are all really unoriginal as well, with pretty much everything being ripped from Mario Kart. Jellyfish obstruct your view like bloopers, footballs are like red shells, plankton shrinks and stuns racers like lightning, and the list goes on and on. There are also cartoon specific items, but they're also kind of just copied from Mario Kart. We also have planes and boats here, which is technically new I guess? The controls feel even worse in these sections though, and they're kind of just a copying paste of the glider and submarine from Mario Kart. The gameplay is just overall boring and lacks the Mario Kart chaotic charm. This game is a textbook ripoff of Mario Kart. It's essentially a poorly done Nickelodeon reskin of the original Mario Kart. Anyways, let's move. Nick! Nick! It's Nick from the future! After buying this game you realize it was so cheap because there's a sequel! Yeah, right, stupid future, Nick. Yeah, I'm not buying that now, even if it does look fun and improved. From what I've seen, the roster is bigger and better, and there are more fun and relevant courses, but I'm not paying 50 bucks for it, so on to the next game. One of the more famous Mario Kart ripoffs comes to us from none other than Sega. Team Sonic Racing. This franchise has given me mixed feelings over the years. It's shifted from Sonic and Sega All-Stars to more so just Sonic. Growing up, I actually owned a couple of Sonic and Sega All-Stars racing games. I liked these games because while I wasn't the biggest Sonic fan, they had characters I loved like Ai Ai and Mimi from Super Monkey Ball, Billy Hatcher, Wreck-It Ralph, and of course, who could forget Danica Patrick? Never forget Danica Patrick. 
But recently, Sega decided that for their most recent racing game, they would focus more on their largest laughing stock, Sonic. Where's I? -I? At least they still had Big the Cat, but sheesh, this roster is disappointing. To give the game credit though, the graphics are pretty stunning. Some might even say that they rival Mario Kart 8's graphics. I wouldn't. Team Sonic Racing has a leg up over mainline Mario Kart games with its fully fledged voice acting for all characters including a narrator and even a story mode too. While voice acting is seen in Mario Kart arcade games, the story mode is something that is yet to be seen in Mario Kart so props to Sega for innovating. Sadly, the story mode is pretty underwhelming, but nonetheless a cool addition. The courses seen in this game are really cool. Since this game is mostly focused on Sonic, the courses all make sense and are really dynamic and well designed. The soundtrack for this game is also really slapping. They went for a more jazzy style orchestra as Mario Kart 8 did, and they crushed it. I mean, just listen to Wisp Circuit. That's only one of the 21 tracks! The gameplay of Team Sonic Racing blows Nickelodeon Racers out of the water. The controls are so much tighter and while the drifting isn't quite as good as in Mario Kart 8, it's still really satisfying to pull off. Rather than being unoriginal with their items, Team Sonic Racing implemented the Wisps. These are the replacement for the typical items in a racing game. And what do they do differently? Well, nothing really. In fact, most of the wisps just cause the player to spin out but using different methods such as lasers, rockets, etc. I guess it's nice that they kind of try to switch it up, but the only truly new part about these items is how they look. This lack of innovation in the gameplay makes it feel pretty stale after a while. Overall, Team Sonic Racing is a viable alternative to Mario Kart if you're a big Sonic fan. Unfortunately, the problem still stands that SEGA removed the SEGA All-Stars part of this game. If this game had just added more SEGA characters to it, it would have easily been a worthy competitor to Mario Kart. The final game I want to talk about is Beach Buggy Racing. I will admit, I am a little biased towards this game because this is probably the racing game I've played the most of outside of Mario Kart. I have some really fond memories of my friends and I always playing the Ultimate Cup and trying to beat my brother who was like 12 time in a row champion but we would always lose. This one time my brother used the lightning item and the game crashed, so I and all of my friends accused him of hacking. Because as we all know, all eight year olds know how to hack an Xbox One. Anyways, I really like this game if it isn't obvious already. The graphics may suck cause it's a mobile port, but this game is just so jank that you can't help but love it. The one thing that really stands out to me about this game were the items. This was the only game that actually had original ideas for items that weren't just another projectile. To name a few, there's the moon that sends you up into the air, the controller that inverts your controls, and the oil that causes your car to become slippery. Each character also has a special item that they can use once per race. These items are usually ridiculously overpowered, boasting such abilities as a carrot machine gun and a literal teleportation device. I've had many erases stolen from me by Bezorp. These special items are really cool, especially when matched with their characters. I like the goofy designs of these characters, my personal favorite being McScully. I pretty much always used him. The car customization in this game is very reminiscent of Crash Team Racing, allowing us to pick a car and then change the paint job of it. I usually go with the monster truck with a tiki design, but that's just me. You can do hundreds of other designs. When we hop into some races, the courses we have are very interesting. They're designed very nicely with risky shortcuts that can make or break your race. At one point I had all the shortcuts memorized, but now I use my brain to store more important information, like what cellular mitosis is. All of these elements in the game come together to create something way more special than it should be. Sure, the controls may be, and the drifting is, and the balance is, but that's what makes it fun! See, this is one of the few games that was able to harness the fun chaotic nature of Mario Kart and embody it in the game. Every part of the game was designed for the sole purpose of being chaos in its purest form. The courses are only two laps to force you to go for more risky maneuvers if you're behind, and the items are way more devastating, so it all just comes together so nicely. So yeah, Beach Buggy Racing is actually a really, really fun Mario Kart ripoff. Nick! WHAT?! THERE'S ANOTHER 
sequel! So, that was three of what I deemed to be Mario Kart ripoffs. Overall, I had pretty positive things to say about these games. That being said, Mario Kart will always reign supreme. You just can't beat the king. If I had to recommend one of these games, I'd probably say Beach Buggy Racing if you're looking for something cheap, but Team Sonic Racing is pretty good if you're looking to spend a couple extra bucks. Since two thirds of the games I looked at today here have a sequel, maybe I'll take a look at those eventually, because they look pretty fun. Anyways, I'm gonna go tell my former self that there are actually sequels to Nickelodeon Kart Racers and Beach Buggy Racing. Wish me luck!